Do we see a bit of a pattern emerging on this channel? Yes. So today I'm back out in another very kind customer's car and it is, oh yeah, an XM. So um, I've had this car in for uh, some, well, ended up being a steering rack change. Um, it was just supposed to be a steering rack gator, but we noticed that the steering rack itself was cracked. Yeah, basically I've done the steering rack change on it, done a couple of fuel hoses, um, which were perishing and a parking brake cable, not a handbrake cable, because it doesn't have a handbrake, it has a parking brake. We'll get onto that in a bit. Um, this car is kind of, I mean, this is a, a dream come true is a silly way of putting it, because um, it's not, but it is something I've always wanted to do. There's a certain series of cars, which if I get to drive them, tick a box. And the box for this car is it's one of the cars from my childhood as is my red BX, but we'll get onto that one another day. Um, so when I was growing up, there were a number of cars we had before a red Mark 1 BX um, on an A-Reg 16 CRS, identical to the one I have. Um, but in terms of Citroens, that was the first one. That got written off by a Mark IV Escort, a nurse, a very upset nurse, and it was replaced with an XM, an early XM, an earlier one than this. Although this car is earlier um, then the plate suggests, the owner tells me, another one of those that's been sat around because they couldn't sell it. Citroen couldn't sell XMs, really. So, yeah, and it is actually pretty much the same spec. This is quite a big deal for me. Same wheel trims, ours had those until they fell off. Um, it had all this bright work. This is a two litre SI model, which is what ours was. The only difference between this one and ours um, that I can see so far, one, slush box ours was a manual i say ours it's my dad's i was a kid um the other thing was the wicked glass within a glass the rear screen which is nuts so people are like why has it got that well citroen wanted to do a hatchback because hatchbacks are better aren't they they are better than saloons it's more practical you can get stuff in it a saloon you're restricted by what you can put in the back the hatchback is better but dignitaries would get annoyed they get a cold neck if someone opened the boot to put in their stuff. So you put another window in it. Get to have the hatchback and keep your dignitaries' necks warm. When I was a kid growing up, to have an XM was quite a big deal. I was really attached to this red BX that we had, as you can probably guess. And to get an XM was pretty wicked. And unfortunately, it coincided with my teenage years. And my teenage years weren't all about how can you sort of become yourself? How can you show the world who you are? How can you live your life? It was conform or be cast out. And uh, conforming to me was not having an XM. That made me stand out and I didn't like that. I was jealous of friends' dads who had like Mondeos and stuff, which is stupid. No, it's one of my big regrets with cars because I should have enjoyed that car more, but we didn't have it long. We only had 18 months because it was troublesome. The whole Friday afternoon car is a, I don't really buy it, it's a bit of a misdemeanor um, because there are no Friday afternoon cars. These cars are made by robots, thousands at a time. If it's a hand-built car, different story, but yeah. So you're just unlucky, you know, and with the one we got, I think it had done 80,000 miles. It was only four years old. Um, a number of bits of trim fell off it. That's, that, that's, that's as it is, you know. I know that fell off and this fell off. The wheel trims fell off, as I said, um, but a lot of the other issues were just down to it having faults because it's a complicated car and no one fixing it properly. And unfortunately, being, you know, although I grew up as a, a fan of Citroens, I've believed all these years that it was just a troublesome car. And the fact is, it probably wasn't. I remember we used to go down the road in it and if you went over a bump after the spheres went, it sent the trip computer into a skiz. It said like the interior light was on or the door was open or something if you went over a bump. Um, they did have electrical problems, these cars. We'll get onto that later, but this one's pretty sorted. And for me, this is peak XM. It's an early, the early one. This is a Series 1. Series 1 has the little badge there, the little Chevron badge on the side. Um, has the bigger spoiler on the back. It has the much better interior. I'm not 
sort of putting anything against those with Series 2 cars. And I know people who know XMs would probably argue that a Series 2 is a better car, but I just love the Series 1. I wouldn't have a Series 2. I, I think they just, they tried to Peugeot-fy it, didn't they? I think Citroen did Series 2 on the XM, the Xantia and the ZX all in one hit. Give it a new corporate nose, which was the most boring nose you've ever seen. And uh, yeah, it, it, as it goes with the ZX, it goes with the Xantia and it goes with the XM. They were better when they came out. I mean, I've never been a big ZX fan, but certainly in the case of the XM and the Xantia, they were both um, better when they came out, as they were. I wouldn't say that you call the XM a handsome car or a pretty car. You'd probably call it a striking car. It's pretty striking. A car like the CX I had a little while back here. Yeah. Uh, same label, um, you'd probably call that pretty. I call that pretty. Some people in the comments didn't call it pretty, but but I think that's a very, very pretty car, the CX. Very delicate, very feminine. This, the nose is a bit. Quite a, quite a feminine nose, quite a delicate nose, but it's just, it's impact, isn't it? That is visual impact. That's not a pretty car. It's a striking car. It's a wedge. Look at it. And you look at it now, and it does look, I'm, just, I'm looking at it in the little screen here. And it just looks so, so, so Citroen. You know, that's bizarre. I'm just seeing that now on the little screen. I've just got like a silhouette, a little bit of, a little bit of white. Yeah, it could be a, a CX or something. But yeah, I think these are absolutely fantastic cars and I've done these a disservice. I can't believe I've passed these. I can't believe I've not even, I think it's because I, what would I do with it? It's so big, it's, it's just massive. It's not a sports car, it's not a fun car, it's, it's just a cruiser. So we better find out how it cruises, haven't we? Well, I'm going to start at the business end, which for me, I've left a grubby fingerprint. Uh, I do apologise to Rob, the very nice owner who's let me do this. He's uh, incidentally, the owner of this car is the columnist um, in the Citroen Car Club um, for the XMs, so he knows his stuff. So straight away, this is all really, really familiar. I recognise everything here, although it is in the sunlight, so it's hard to see. This seat fabric is exactly what my dad's had. Um, and also remember this. Nifty. Out of the SM, although in the SM, they lift the other way for, for reasons. Um, I've got the seat quite far back, I think. No, no, I haven't. No, the seat, the seat is actually where I have it. It's not as spacious as the C6 which I shall get onto another time, and I wouldn't say it's got as much room as the CX, but it's just, yeah, this is all coming back. In fact, let's, let me shift over, because this was my seat. Oh, now the back seat is softer than the front. I'll get onto the front seat in a minute, but yeah, this was my seat. This is where I used to sit when we used to go on family trips and stuff. I remember I had an air vent. I was very happy about that. It has no air con, so it doesn't really do a lot, but yeah wow this is the first time i've sat in the back of this so i didn't have that rear window it did have the sun blinds but ours didn't have that window but it did have this fabric so this is the si model um if you if it was a diesel it'll be an sd uh, a two liter si so the bottom of the range car in the uk was a two liter i which didn't have electric rear windows and i think it had different fabric to this um and then they, they had the si and then you had the sei and the SEI had fake wood trim, which I actually prefer not to have, um, and leather, which I actually prefer not to have. I think this, it's like being in a nice sofa. There's not a huge amount of headroom in the back of it. Headlining sagging a little bit, but you know, this car's 30 years old. <laughs> Let's not forget that. Yeah, this is bringing it back. Window switch, mat pocket storage stuff i don't know what i used to put in there but i used to have to share the back seat with siblings oh yeah and had an armrest yeah oh it's lovely it's lovely very comfy i remember it was the first car we had that had like retractable web handles as well but yeah look at the attention they've put into trying to keep it quiet I've got a seal here but you've also got a seal here road noise was something they didn't want Citroen put a lot of effort into the XM they really did I particularly love 
this bit. And I always, I always said to my dad when we got it, why does it have that? And he was actually right. It's because the glass, he told me the glass is twisted. So it's curved here on a different plane to down here. And it wraps around, it really does wrap around. This is a true floating roof. And the reason it's got a divider there is because the window wouldn't go down otherwise. It wouldn't be able to slide down into the door, so they had to split it. Normally cars have quarter lights because they're old and they just can't, that's what they used to do. But for this car, it's because that wouldn't fit in. So I moved into the uh, business end. Had someone in one of those Hyundai things behind me pull up, those electric things. And that's one of the other things I think is relevant about this car now, is I remember my dad had this, well, one of these, he used to say about how big it was, how difficult it was to find a parking space for it. And now it's not. I mean, you look at this car behind, there's a chap here, he's taking, he's taking pictures of his Hyundai. Maybe he's a YouTuber. It was, it was such a big car, and now it's not. By modern standards, it isn't. It's got a big overhang, but... Uh, on the front but yeah it's um it's really not but yeah the mark one or the series one totally different interior so the exterior minor changes they had sort of more rounded horrible wheel trims and they didn't have the big spoiler on the back they had a little lip spoiler and they had the grill as i say but inside they they really did round it down um or round it off and this is the original and this is just so much better i love the way the dash slopes away from you it does that in the bx as well um, lots of natty little features in here, including a display screen there, information display screen, trip computer type thing, not a strictly a trip computer, it doesn't do MPG and things, it may in other models. Um, this is like a light bar here, so you've got all your warning lights and things, and obviously you've got your, your gauges and dials there. They did do a diesel version of these, a 2.1 turbo diesel, and le later a 2.5, but the 2.1 had a little boost gauge down there, <laughs> because why not? Um, but I just love, I love the interior, the single spoke wheel. People, you, car journalists used to moan, oh, the radio is too far away. And it's in that little thing. Hmm, it's not there anymore. But motoring journalists used to moan that the, the radio was too far away. Well, Citroen went to the trouble of putting buttons on here, so it doesn't, you know, what do you want? Um, I love, I mean, the stalks weren't using any other type of Citroen. And they, I love the way they leave little wings hide it so there's no you don't see the workings of it inside the lights on this little rotary dial here which i have taken inspiration on for the imp oh yeah the imp i forgot about that but yeah it's it's just a lovely lovely place to sit and it's a really striking place to sit because the way that this roof wraps around and these pillars it really it dominates I mean, you can feel the curve on that glass it dominates your view it feels like nothing else it was a piece of design i mean the Vauxhall Carlton was out when this came out. And the Ford Granada. The Ford Granada is basically a stretch Sierra. You've got climate control, no air con, but you do have climate control. So you put it on auto, set the temperature you want, and the car will sort it out for you, I assume. Is that, yeah, that's the, you can turn the interior lights on with a button. Um, and fog lights here, wipers, heated rear window and everything here. You'll notice the little parking brake, no handbrake. Oh, that's foot-operated parking brake is a nonsense, said what car in 1992. I actually think that's what they said. I'm pretty sure. I used to read a lot of car magazines. Why is it a nonsense? You've got more room down here to not have a handbrake, so you can have a nice, massive, cushy armrest with a, a lot of storage space in it. Oh, it's really difficult. Oh, look, I've turned the handbrake on. Parking brake. I've released it. It's probably harder with a clutch. Um, hill starts in a manual might be fun but yeah it's just it's just such a cool thing I love it we should probably go and see what it drives like